Today we're going to talk about the Lagrange form of the remainder, also called Lagrange error bound or Taylor's theorem remainder. When a Taylor polynomial is used to approximate a function, we need a way to see how accurately the polynomial approximates the function. Uh, here's the function value itself, here's the approximation, and here's the remainder. So if you take an approximation, it's going to have an error, but if you add on the error, you're going to get the exact value of the function originally. And then to get this line right here, we just have to subtract the approximation. So the remainder equals the function, the actual function value, minus your approximation. So we use remainder and error uh, interchangeably. Uh, written in words, function equals polynomial plus remainder, so remainder equals function minus polynomial. Taylor's theorem says, if a function f is differentiable through the order n plus 1, in an interval containing c for each x in the interval, there exists a number z between x and c such that uh, f of x equals, uh, well, this is here's your Taylor polynomial. And here on the end, we have what would be left over to make up for the error, where the remainder r sub nx, or error, is given by uh, the following. And just like on the alternating series, when we wanted to find the error, we found the first omitted term. Well, this is the same thing. This is just the next term. Here's the next derivative, uh, the next x minus c, and, of course, the next factorial term. This is called the Lagrange remainder. Historically, the remainder was not due to Taylor, but a French mathematician, Joseph Louis Lagrange, from 1736 to 1813. For this reason, Rn of x is called the Lagrange form of the remainder. When applying Taylor's formula, we would not expect to be able to find the exact value of z, Rather, we would attempt to find bounds for the derivative uh, from which we would be able to tell how large the remainder is. Thus, for the purpose of approximating values of function, we restate Taylor's formula in the following way. Taylor's inequality. Suppose that p sub n of x is the nth degree polynomial approximation for the function f about x equals c. So c will be where we're centering this. And m is the maximum value of this derivative, the n plus 1th derivative. On the interval c to b or b to c if b is less than c, then the error in using the polynomial value to estimate f of b, so the error of using this approximation to approximate this function, is bounded by m, the maximum value of this derivative. And you're thinking, well, maximum value? Well, think about uh, sine and cosine. Sine and cosine are between negative 1 and 1, so the biggest value for sine would be 1 if that's what the derivative was. If this said sine of x, the biggest value would be 1. Uh, over n plus 1 factorial, b minus c of n plus 1, that is all that just says uh, the error will be less than or equal to the next term. That is the remainder until Taylor's formula satisfies the inequality. The absolute value of the error will be less than or equal to essentially, like I said, the next term. So here we have an example. It says, let f be a function with five derivatives on the interval 2 to 3, and assume that the fifth derivative is less than 0.2 for all x in the interval 2 to 3. If a fourth degree Taylor polynomial for f s equals to, uh, 2 is used to estimate f of 3, how accurate is this approximation and give three decimal places? So we're looking at a fourth degree Taylor polynomial. So the, uh, the error will be r of 4 of x, the absolute value, will be less than or equal to the absolute value, the maximum value uh, the, the fifth derivative could be, the next derivative is 0.2, so we have 0.2 times uh, the x that we're looking at is 3, so we have 3, and then we're centering this thing at 2, so we have 3 minus 2 uh, to the n plus 1, and the n plus 1 in this case would be to the fifth power, and that's all over 5 factorial, uh, which is going to be less than or equal to 0.2. That'll be 1 to the 5th, which is 1, divided by 5 factorial, which is less than or equal to, let's get a calculator here, 0.2 divided by 120. Enter. So 0 0.00166. So we have point. 00166. In the next example, we're asked to find the fifth degree Maclaurin polynomial 
for sine of x. Then use your polynomial to approximate sine of 1 and use Taylor's theorem to find the maximum error for your approximation. Give three decimal places. So in letter A, we're going to start out by finding the fifth degree Maclaurin polynomial for sine. So P sub 5 of x equals, uh, I need odd powers. We have x minus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. There's the fifth degree. Let's grab our calculator. Let's find that value. Uh, we're going to find the sine of 1. So we have 1 minus 1 divided by 6, which is 3 factorial, and then plus 1 divided by 5 factorial, which is 120. So the approximation is 0.842. It says give three decimal places. Uh, we can actually use 0.841. I guess we'll truncate. So we have uh, this is equal to 0.8. For one. In letter B, we're asked to find an interval A to B such that uh, the approximation is in between A and B. Give three decimal places. So we have to find the error. So R sub 5 of X is less than or equal to the absolute value of the biggest value that sine could possibly have, or cosine for that matter, is 1. So we have times uh, x minus c. So we are, let's see, we are uh, estimating a value, an x value of 1, and we're centering this around 0 because it's a Maclaurin polynomial. And that's to the 6th power all over 6 factorial. Now that's less than or equal to 1 over 6 factorial, which is less than or equal to, let's find out what that value is, 1 divided by 6 Whoops, one too many. Factorial. Zero, zero, one, three. So we're asked to find an interval A to B such that sine of one is in between uh, the values. Give three decimal places. So now we're going to take 0 0.841. Remember, this is the error. This is our approximation. We're trying to find an interval which the actual value uh, lays in. So we have uh, 0.841 minus the error. Point zero zero I guess I could do this minus the answer probably only be able to do this once uh, so point eight three nine six so point eight three nine six is less than or equal to the sine of one is less than or equal to then we have uh, point eight four one plus the error, 0 0.00138. So when we get this value, we have 0 0.84238. 0 0.84, 0 0.84238. In letter, oh, it says give to three decimal places. So that's that's easy enough with this. I'll erase this. And we'll erase that one right there. There's the three decimal places. All right, let's go back to the, uh, the pen. Could sine of 1 equal 0 0.9? Well, 0 0.9 would be over here. So letter C, no, 0 0.9 is out of the interval. In our next example, we're asked to write the fourth degree Maclaurin polynomial for E to X. Then use your polynomial to approximate E and find a Lagrange error bound for the maximum error when the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1, give three decimal places. So we have uh, letter A, Maclaurin polynomial of degree 4 is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Use your polynomial to approximate e and find Lagrange error bound. For the, for the maximum error when the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1, find three decimal places. So we are asked to find the value for e to the first. So we're going to plug 1 into all these. Let's see what that is. 1 plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1 divided by 6, which is 3 factorial, plus 1 divided by 24. Enter 
2.7083. Again, three decimal places. So let me get rid of that last one. I get excited with decimal places, apparently. Uh, find a Lagrange error bound for the maximum. All right, so then the remainder, or the error, is equal to the absolute value of, well, the biggest value of the derivative. All derivatives of e to the x are all e to the x. So the biggest the derivative can be is e times, and then our x value is at 1, and we're centered around 0. This is to the fifth power, all over 5 factorial. So this is equal to e divided by 5 factorial. e raised to the first power divided by 5 factorial. So point zero two two six five zero two two six five. There'll be plenty of decimal places, of course. Uh, letter B says find the interval a to b such that a uh, e is between a and b. Give three decimal places. Find the interval that we know this is going to be between. Well, here's our estimate, right there. There's our approximation. So we just have to do a little addition, a little subtraction, and we got it. So two point seven zero eight minus point zero two two six five there's the lower bound so two point six eight five two point six eight five is less than or equal to e is less than or equal to now we just have to add on there two point seven zero eight plus point zero two two six five and we have two point seven three one two Point seven three one. In the last example, the function f has derivatives of all orders for all real numbers x. Assume that here's the function value, first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, all at 2. A. Write the third degree t of the polynomial for f about x equals 2 and use it to approximate f of 2.3. Give three decimal places. All right, so letter A. We have a four, third degree. P sub 3 of x equals, oh, let's see, 6 plus 4 times x minus 2, and then we have minus 7 times x minus 2 squared over 2 factorial, and then plus 8 times x minus 2 to the third over 3 factorial. Now we're asked to use it to approximate f of 2.3, give three decimal places. Let's grab our calculator, and we have 6 plus 4 times 0.3, because we have 2.3 minus 2, that's 0.3. Minus 7 times 0.3 squared divided by 2. And then plus 8 times 0.3 uh, to the third power, and then divide that by 6. So the approximation is 6.921. 6.921. In letter B, the fourth derivative of S sat F satisfies the inequality. So the fourth derivative is less than or equal to 9. So here's your maximum value of the fourth derivative for all x in the closed interval 2 to 2.3. Use the Lagrange error bound on the approximation of f of 2.3 found in part a to find an interval a, b such that f of 2.3 is in between the interval. Give three decimal places. So the absolute value of the remainder is less than or equal to the absolute value of the maximum value of the fourth derivative, which we are told is 9 times. Uh, then we have 2.3 minus 2 to the fourth power, all over 4 factorial, which is less than or equal to, uh, let's see, let's grab our calculator again. We have 9 times 0.3 to the fourth power, and we're going to divide that by uh, 24, which is 4 factorial. So we have 0 0.003. 0 0.003. Zero now we're asked to find the interval, so there's uh, the error. Here's the approximation. So the actual value has to be between this interval. Let's see, i got to uncover this. 
we have 6.921 minus 0 0.003. So we have 6.918. 6.918 is less than or equal to uh, the value f of 2.3 is less than or equal to, and now we have to add on the point zero zero three. I don't really need a calculator for that. Uh, 6.924. Could f of 2.3 equal 6.922? Show why or why not? C. Yes. 6.918 is less than or equal to 6.922 is less than or equal to 6.9. Two, four. In other words, 6.922 is well within the interval.